What is beta? When you're researching a stock, you'll often see, along with some other fundamental information, a value for the beta of the stock. Here we see that Bank of America has a beta of 2.55. Well, what does that mean? Beta is a measure of statistical variance. It represents the relationship between a stock and the overall market, usually in terms of the S&P 500 index. Think about it this way. If we measure the monthly change in the price of a stock against the monthly change in the index, we could plot those figures on a chart. We might see one month when both the stock and the index went down, another month when both went up, and maybe some instance where the stock was up a bit even though the index went down. After plotting a few years worth of data, we'd end up with a chart that looks something like this. Analyzing the plot gives us a line that shows the relationship that best fits this data. If you took a statistics class, you might recognize this as the linear regression line. And any line, of course, can be defined by an equation. The part just before the x shows the slope of the line, in this case 2.35. This, the slope of the line, is the stock's beta. It shows how much we can expect the stock to move up or down compared against the benchmark, or at least what's happened in the past. But here's one problem with beta. There may not be much of a correlation between the price of the stock and the S&P 500 index. As you can see, while the line shows the best fit for the points on the graph, hardly any of those dots are actually on the line. So one additional measurement that's interesting is the correlation between the two. A statistic called R-squared measures correlation. It ranges from 1, which represents a perfect correlation, all the way down to 0, which represents no correlation at all. In the case of Bank of America, this correlation is 0.42. Let's look at another example. Here's a similar chart for AT&T. Its beta is a lot less than Bank of America, only 0.64, and has a correlation of 0.34. What about a security that you wouldn't expect to be related to the S&P 500 index at all? Say, an ETF that tracks long-term treasury bonds. Here you can see that the beta is actually negative, and that the correlation is only 0 0.10, almost no correlation at all. Looking at data like this can help you decide whether a bond ETF might help you balance your portfolio. Now let's look at a few NASDAQ stocks. Netflix has a beta of 0.48, but those dots are all over the chart, so the correlation with the S&P 500 is nearly zero. Research in Motion, on the other hand, has a much higher beta, 1.91, and a higher correlation to the market. One interesting thing about beta is that you don't always have to use the S&P 500 as a benchmark. Here's that Bank of America chart again, showing a beta of 2.35 against the S&P 500. But what if instead of comparing Bank of America to the S&P 500, we compared it to the XLF? That's the ETF that tracks S&P 500 financial stocks. Compared to the XLF, Bank of America has a lower beta, 1.75, but note that the correlation is a lot higher, and that could reflect the way financial stocks tend to trade along with their peers. Finally, let's look at a gold mining stock. This is Goldfields Limited. Its beta is only 0.56, but there's almost no correlation to the S&P 500. But what if instead of the S&P 500, we compared gold fields to the price of gold itself? Well, now we see a much stronger relationship, a beta of 1.45 and a correlation of 0.54. So in summary, remember that beta measures the variance of a stock against a benchmark, usually the S&P 500. But whatever a stock's beta is compared to the S&P 500, a low correlation may mean that the beta isn't a very reliable indicator. And finally, other benchmarks might be a better way to track the variance of a stock. For example, comparing a gold mining stock to gold itself instead of the S&P 500.